I'm Pat Duga. In this screencast, we're going to learn about how to actually solve exponential equations and inequalities and look at an example that deals with compound interest. Let's look at a couple of vocabulary terms first. An exponential equation is an equation that involves an exponential function, usually equaling some certain value. For example, if we wanted to find out when 5 to the x equals 125, that's an example of an exponential equation. And finding that value of x that, that leads to this being true. A compound interest example is a specific example that involves the growth, usually the growth, of an investment at an interest rate uh, that's given. An exponential inequality would be something like 5 to the x power less than or equal to 125. And so we'd be looking for values of x that would make this statement true. What values of x would make 5 to the x less than or equal to 125? And it works very much like all the inequalities that you've used up to this point. Now, the first technique we're going to look at in this screencast in terms of solving inequalities and equations involving uh, exponential functions is this property of equality for exponential functions. And that is that if the base is greater than 0 and not equal to 1, because if it is, it's not an exponential function, then the uh, b to the x must be equal to b to the y if and only if x equals y. So in other words, if I can set them up with a common base and the two things are equal to each other, then those two exponents must be equal to each other. For example, if I have 3 to the x equals 3 to the 5, then x must be 5 because if the bases are the same and it's an equation, then the exponents themselves must be also the same. And so if x equals 5, then therefore 3x, 3 to the x equals 3 to the fifth. So let, let's look at 3 to the x equals 9 to the 4 power. Now, important, it's important to note that that previous property I talked about is only true if the bases are equal. So we've got to somehow turn 3 to the x or 9 to the fourth into a common base. In fact, we can rewrite the 9 as 3 to the second. Once we've written 9 as 3 to the second, we now have a common base of 3. So we have 3 to the x equals 3 to the second to the fourth power. However, I need to use one of my properties of exponents, and that is a power, raising a power to a power. And so 3 to the second raised to the fourth power, you'll recall, is 3 to the 2 times 4, 3 to the 8th. So now we have them in a common base, 3 to the x equals 3 to the 8th. And therefore, using our property of equality for exponential functions, x must equal 8. Now you can always go back and check your work and put the x equals 8 into the original equation. You can verify that 3 to the 8th does equal 9 to the 4th. Let's go ahead and solve a more complex exponential equation, and that is 2 to the 5x power equals 4 to the 2x minus 1 power. Now again, we cannot just set the powers equal to each other until we have a common base. But I have bases of 2 and 4, and we can pretty easily rewrite 1 in terms of the other base. So if we rewrite 4 as 2 to the second power, we wind, we wind up with that common base. So 2 to the 5x power is equal to 4, which is 2 to the second power, all raised to the 2x minus 1 power. So by rewriting that 4 as 2 to the second, I wind up with this common base. Now once again, I'm going to use my power of a power property. So 2 raised to the second power, all raised to the 2x minus 1 power, is equal to 2 to the 2 times 2x minus 1 power. We've got to distribute that 2 to both the 2x and the negative 1. And so on the right-hand side, we get 2 raised to the 4x minus 2 power. And therefore, since the bases are the same, I can use that property of equality and set the powers equal to each other. Therefore, because of that property of equality, 5x must be equal to 4x mi minus 2. And of course, what I can do now is um, subtract the 4x from both sides, leaving us with x equal to negative 2. Again, check your work. This is your answer, x equals negative 2, but 2 to the 5 times x, which is negative 2, better be equal to 4 
to the two times x, which is negative two minus one power. So two to the negative 10 does indeed equal four to the negative five power. And therefore my answer checks out. So populations are a really good example of something that can be modeled with exponential functions. So let's look at um, Capital City, which is the capital of the state that Springfield is in in The Simpsons. Let's say in 2010, the population of Capital City was estimated at 1,321,045. By the year 2017, it was estimated to be 1,512,986. So we're going to create an exponential model that can be used to model the population of Capital City. And we're going to use x in terms of the number of years since 2010. So where x equals 0, we're talking about 2010. In fact, that is uh, the beginning of this model. So whereas x equals 0, it's going to intercept the y-axis at 1,321,045. And so that's the value of a in the model um, y equals a times b to the x. And in fact, we're going to use that model for this. And so therefore, in 2017, x is equal to 7. And we know that new estimated population. We're going to substitute these values into the all-important um, model for, for exponential growth or decay, which is y equals a b to the x. a is the starting amount. b is the base, which winds up being the growth rate or decay rate, although in this case it's growing. X is going to be the amount of years uh, since 2010. So we're going to use this model to be able to make predictions about what could happen for the future of Capital City, the Windy Apple. So we take that y equals ab to the x. In the seventh year, the population is 1,512,986. We know we started at 1,321,045, so that's our a value. So by replacing this, we can then determine how much the population has actually grown over that seven years once we figure out what b is. And so what we're going to do next is divide both sides by 1,321,045. Because in solving exponential equations, we've got to isolate that base. So we're going to get rid of anything else that doesn't involve the base. So therefore, we're going to divide by that a term. When we divide these two numbers, we get 1.145 approximately is, equal, is approximately equal to b to the seventh power. So if we take this, we can undo powers with roots. So we can undo the seventh power by taking the seventh root of both sides. The seventh root of 1.145 is going to be approximately equal to the seventh root of b to the seventh, which is going to be b. So now we've gotten rid of the power by taking the root, the appropriate root. And if you do that on your calculator, the seventh root of 1.145 is approximately equal to 1.0196. Now what this actually means is that the, from 2010 to 2017, the population of Capital City grew at a rate of about 1.96% per year. That is the growth rate. So our model, which is the important thing we were after, if the uh, growth of Capital City continues on this exponential model, it can be predicted to be 1,321,045 times 1.0196 to the x power. So if you actually wanted to use that model to predict uh, Capital City's population in the year 2023, we would go ahead and substitute an appropriate value of 13 for x because 2023 is 13 years since 2010. Put that into the model, replacing that x with 13, and we would get an estimated population of 1,700,221. And that is the estimated population in 2023. Now, let's look at an example of what's called compound interest. And it, and it uses an exponential function in the, using this formula where a is the amount the investment is worth at any point in time, p is the starting amount. And then the base is equal to 1 plus whatever the interest annual interest rate is divided by the number of periods. And that's all raised to the nt power, where n is the number of periods uh, in a year, and t is the number of years. Now, I know that seems pretty complicated. Let's look at an example. 
So let's say an investment account has an, a 5.4% annual interest rate, and that's compounded quarterly. So every uh, four times a year, interest is calculated and accumulates. And if we have an initial investment of $4,000 into the account, what's the balance after eight years? We're going to use that compound interest formula. And in this case, P is 4,000, that's our starting amount. Our rate, it's 5.4%, but as a decimal value, that's written as 0 0.054. It's important to note N is four because this is quarterly. There are, there are four periods of compound interest per year. And then there are eight years. So we're gonna put all this into the formula. And so the amount the investment is gonna be worth at this point, eight years in the future, is 4,000, the original starting amount, times one plus the rate divided by the number of compounding periods, R is the rate, N is the number of compounding periods, which is 0 0.054, the annual rate divided by four. And that's all raised to the four, um, because there are four, four periods in a year, times T because it is eight, year, eight years. And another way to look at that is four times eight is 32. Over that eight year period, we've compounded the interest four times a year, times eight years, so we've compounded it actually 32 times. When you put all that in your calculator, you do get $6,143.56. That's how much your, in, your investment uh, would be worth after eight years. And if you were to put the equation 4,000 times 1.0135, and it's important to note, all this in this parenthesis simplifies down to 1.0135. And if you raise that to the 4t period, and on your calculator you'll have to use x, if you raise that to the 4x period, you'll see a graph if you zoom in at 8 that looks something like this. And if you actually went using trace or other methods to x equals 8 or 8 years in the future, you would also see this graphically at $6,143.56. Now let's look at exponential inequalities. And uh, there's a property of inequality for exponential functions. Well, it's very similar to the property, property of equality. And that is, if the bases are the same, b to the x is greater than b to the y, if and only if x is greater than y. In other words, as long as the bases are the same, uh, the same relationship will hold true for the powers. Uh, in this case, x greater than y. And the reverse is also true. For example, if 2 to the x is greater than 2 to the 6, then x is greater than 6. And therefore also, uh, x, if x is greater than 6, then 2 to the x is greater than 2 to the 6. So let's look at an exponential inequality example. And we have 5 to the 3 minus 2x power is greater than 1 over 625. It's important to note all the properties of inequalities that you've learned up to this point still apply here. So we've got to get a common base. So somehow I've got to rewrite 1 over 625 as 5 to the something. And in fact, that something is negative 4. 1 over 625 is the same as 5 to the negative fourth power. So rewriting that, I get 5 to the 3 minus 2x greater than 5 to the minus 4. Since the bases are the same, I can apply the same property of inequality, stating that the powers must have that same relationship. So 3 minus 2x must also be greater than negative 4. And I'm going to go ahead and solve that by moving the 3 to the other side, giving me negative 2x greater than negative 7. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. You'll recall with all inequalities, if you divide or multiply by a negative number, you must change the direction of the inequality. Therefore, x is less than 7 over 2. We've looked at solving exponential equations and inequalities, also using an example of a population growth model and a compound interest model.